Hey, we wanted to just take a moment and just say thanks and welcome you into joining us the, to, to watch the rest of the video and worship with us. But we also want to take a moment and just say thanks for um, your kindness and your graciousness and your ability to audible with us. Clearly, this is not how we had planned it early on in the week of what Sunday would look like. But um, things have changed and things have happened, and so we're we're now doing online video. And um, we just wanted to say thanks for um, your kindness and your grace that you are extending to us. And um, there will be more information um, next week coming out of what the next Sunday and the Sundays going forward will look like, because we don't know yet what that's going to look like. So we will get information out to you as soon as we, those decisions are made. Um, but we wanted to, again, just say thanks, and we want to invite you to watch the rest of the video with us and to participate in, in the teaching time and, and singing and communion and to do that with whoever is gathered there with you. We're so glad you joined us today. Let's take some time and sing before our God together, because he is faithful both now and forever. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. stretched arm. His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Sing praise. setting sun from the rising to the setting sun his love endures forever and by the grace of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing As we gather today, we wanted to take some time and talk about gratitude and thanksgiving, especially towards God and especially over the past year, things we can be thankful for and show gratitude to God. Too. But before we get into that, um, I have a question. And this question is also for you all watching. Um, you can take some time and answer this question amongst yourselves. Uh, but the question I have for us is, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food item? When you think Thanksgiving, I'm not done yet. When you think Thanksgiving, <laughs> it's not a Thanksgiving meal unless you have this. No, still not you. I'm going to go first. And I'm not going to say one item because I have two. <laughs> right? So for me, it is corn pudding and dirt pudding. Pudding. Not <laughs> yeah. pudding, folks. Pudding. <laughs> yeah, pu pudding. Pudding. Pudding's What's better. The, is there pudding, a difference? Pudding's better than pudding. Oh, okay. It takes too long to say pudding. Oh. So the extra G takes something away from the ingredients? Absolutely. Oh. Or it adds something. 
you, you, I, you're adding it. I, I actually think so. that. Add something I don't like, evidently. <laughs> corn pudding, dirt pudding. That's so me. corn pudding and or pudding and mm-hmm. dirt pudding mm-hmm. is yours. That's mine. All right. So mine would be um, stuffing. But it's not just any sort of stuffing. It's it's my mother's stuffing. Um, I It's incredible. And, and it's... It's just as good on Thanksgiving Day as it is the day after and the next day because she makes enough for an army. <laughs> and so um, it's – I don't know what the recipe is. I probably should learn that at some point in time in my life. But it's it's my mother's stuffing. Mm. What yep. about you, Sean? Mine is giblets. <laughs> the giblets. Uh, the, the turkey heart and the gizzard. My dad and I always have a little – Fight over who gets to them first and gets to eat them. Sometimes my mom will make a gravy out of them. It's pretty good. My family yeah, over that. Come over and eat all, all yours, you. too. That's really <laughs> Glad you enjoy those. At least you know no one else will want them. Well, my dad will. Right. Yeah. Apparently, there are a couple yeah. in the family. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not a big fan of whatever you just said. <laughs> I, I like turkey as a whole. In fact, Rachel, my wife, does this great... Uh, bath for the turkey where it's marinating in salt and sugar like multi days beforehand and it is it is spectacular love the love the thanksgiving turkey mm. yeah so take some time answer that question amongst yourselves what is your favorite thanksgiving meal item so like i said before we wanted to take some time this morning um, and and the way it's going to happen is each of us are going to go through verses or a verse that talks about gratitude or thanksgiving um, to God. And we're going to kind of look at it over the past year. Like, what is it over the past year that we can be great, gratitude gracious? Show gratitude for, we'll go with that one, more thanks to God for. Um, I'll start. What I'm looking at is the verses that are found in Luke 17. And it's the story of the ten lepers um, that see Jesus and they approach Jesus and they're essentially asking to be healed. Um, They've had leprosy. It doesn't say how long. I'm assuming for a really long time. Um, But they've heard about Jesus, so they approach Jesus, and they they want Jesus to heal them or cleanse them. Um, And it says in Luke 17, where Jesus then tells them, go and see the priests and be cleansed. And it says, as they go, they start to be cleansed. So we don't know if that was one step, 10 feet, 500 yards. We don't know how long that journey was. But it says, as they go, they were cleansed. We'll pick up in verse 15. So Luke 17, 15 says, One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. So as they're walking, they start noticing that, that they're being healed. They're getting cleansed. And I would assume they want to get to the priest as soon as possible. They want to be declared healthy. They want their life back. They want to not have to yell unclean every time they see someone coming towards their way. But the interesting thing is the tenth guy, when he noticed as he's going on, he's being cleansed, his impulse is a little different than the rest. He doesn't keep going. He turns around and he comes back to Jesus to express his gratitude, to express his thank. Instead of running towards the priest to be declared clean, he turns around, he runs back to Jesus and he thanks him. His life had been given back to him. His future has been restored. We pick up in verse 17. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The other nine are so concerned with what was coming next that it seems they've already forgotten what had just happened. They'd already forgotten about the miracle. They didn't want to come back. They were just moving on to what the next thing was. That's a lot like what I do. And I won't speak for all of us, but I'm really good at praying for something. And then once that thing happens, no matter the answer that I get, I'm on to the next thing. Instead of thinking that I need to express gratitude or thanks to God for answering that prayer, whatever that might be, I'm on to the next thing. The interesting thing, even within these verses, is that Jesus notices the man's gratitude. Jesus makes a point to say, I notice you. I see you. And you're saying thanks. It meant something to him. Our gratitude, our thanksgiving, means something to Jesus. The other nine were happy. They were healed. They were moving on. They received the miracle without thanking him. And I don't think Jesus took the miracle back from them because they didn't say thanks. But specifically within this, it shows where the man says thank you. 
I think this passage shows us that we have an obligation to be thankful, to express gratitude, and to praise God for what he's done for us. And it shows that he notices when we do that. Yeah. As, as we were having a conversation this weekend talking about verses of thankfulness and gratitude and, and, and what comes to mind for, for each of us, the one that came to mind for me was Colossians 3.17. And Colossians 3.17 says this, In whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I really like the way the message translation words this verse, and it says this, Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus. And and this is the part that, pay attention here, this is the part that I really like, the way that they worded this. Thanking God the Father every step of the way. Um, and as I think about on this last year, and, and in particular the last eight to nine months um, for, for all of us, as I, as I think about that, I have not been the most thankful. Um, I have not been the most joyful person probably to be around. Um, and, and there have certainly been times and, and things that I have found myself thankful for, but that has not been my primary posture towards the last year. Um, there, again, there are certain things that I find myself that I am thankful for, but um, it's not the common way. It's not my first thought. It's not my first move. It's not my first action is to be found thankful and grateful for, for whatever comes my way. Um, and, and as I just have thought about the last eight to nine months or the last year, um, man, this, this verse just, man, it, it hits me on a different level of no matter what comes my way, no matter what is thrown at me, this verse is saying, Every step of the way, be found thankful. Thanking God every step of the way. Whatever it is that's thrown our way. Um, to be found thankful every step of the way. And um, as I think about the last year and reflect on that, that, that's not been a true statement in much of my life this last year. Um, and I really like the way Eugene Peterson, as he was talking about um, this idea of being thankful and and grateful. Uh, he says this, he says, the miracle isn't that we are delivered from our present circumstances. It's that we are transformed through them. We are transformed through them. Um, and, and I, I, what I, what I found is when I live this way, when I live from this place of being found thankful and, and grateful for whatever is thrown my way, whatever comes at me, when, when, I, when I find myself every step of the way thanking God, the people around me are better. I'm better. Myself, me, uh, my, my whole demeanor, my, my um, attitude, my, my temper, all of these things, it's just better. Um, and, and therefore, it's better for everyone around me when I live from this place of being found thankful. Um, and, and what this verse does for me, what Colossians 3.17 does for me, it reminds me that my standard mode of operation, my first move, my first action, my first thought, my default setting, whatever term you want to use there, is to be found thanking God every step of the way. As we talk about thankfulness, one of the potential barriers to that can be our anxiety. And I would just like to spend a couple of seconds here before reading our verse to just list a few things that might be making us anxious right now. Of course, there's COVID. And for some of us, it might be the economy or the direction our country is headed, uh, regardless of which side of the aisle you vote with. We, we might be thinking about the education of our loved ones as they're going back and forth between uh, e-learning and getting to see their teachers and peers. We've got the worry of our loved ones and whether or not they'll be sick, 
will we be able to even gather these holidays with our family? And uh, maybe even things like, can we afford to do Thanksgiving dinner or to buy Christmas for our kids and for our family? And then we come along to these words that Paul writes in the book of Philippians chapter 4. And he, he begins up in verse 6 saying, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, be, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so I think that there's this call to go ahead and, and present our needs, our, our anxieties, our worries before the Lord. But then there's this, this suggestion that Paul makes, this maybe even as strong as a command, that has to do with giving thanks. And, and you know, people who struggle with anxiety, one of the things that their doctors encourage them to do is in a moment of anxiety, they're, they're to stop and to survey their surroundings. They, they're to focus on things that they can see and smell and hear and kind of list those in their mind to break that pattern of anxiety that they're focused on. And Paul is almost suggesting the same thing here, that we should stop in our prayer with the Lord and, and petition him and, and ask him for help, but also take a survey of the surroundings and list the things that we're thankful for, because God is faithful to us. Mm -hmm. And it's good for us in our prayer to just let him know that we remember those things and we spot those things. And he goes on to say that when we do that, that God's peace, that the Hebrew word shalom, the wholeness that makes us well, will guard our hearts, our hearts and our minds. And uh, that they will, we will be guarded in Christ Jesus. So as believers with the Spirit of God inside of us, when we reach a moment that's, that's kind of like being at the tree of life, being tempted of whether or not we'll continue to trust God or we'll decide for ourselves. In that anxious moment, am I going to run away? Am I going to do things my way to try to fix that, that thing that's worrying me? Or am I going to trust God? We have the spirit of the living God inside of us as believers to help us to continue in that relationship of trust with him. Thank God for that. So I'm a musician to my core. And as we were talking about these verses that talk about faithful, or excuse me, thankfulness and giving thanks, my mind went to the Bible's songbook, to the book of Psalms. And Psalm 92 begins with these four verses. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your faith, your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening. Accompanied by a ten-stringed instrument, a harp, and the melody of a lyre. You thrill me, Lord, with all you have done for me. I sing for joy because of what you have done. When we read the story of creation... At the end of each day, God says, it is good. Even, it is very good. That same Hebrew word for good in Genesis is the word that's used here in Psalms. As good as it is to have darkness and light, it's that good to give thanks to God. As good as it is to have water and sky, it is that good to sing praises to God. As good as it is to have dry ground and oceans, it's that good to proclaim God's unfailing love in the morning. As good as it is that there are plants and animals and that we are here, it is that good to tell of God's faithfulness each evening. The writer of the psalm then names some instruments that require some extra skill uh, to use, the ten-stringed instrument, uh, a harp, the melody played on a lyre or a guitar there. I think perhaps the writer is calling us back to remembering the skillfulness of our own creator. And in this fourth verse, because God is a skilled creator, because God is faithful, because God's love is unfailing, because he is the most high, the psalmist declares, 
his amazement for God, and his response is to sing for joy because of what you have done. Sometimes it's not easy to be thankful. Life gets heavy, and we are in much less control than what we want to be. In those moments, I need to remember from this psalm that it is good, really good, to show our gratitude and praise to our God. Because when life gets hard, God is good. When we feel out of control, we can look to the Creator who is faithful and gives us His unfailing love. When we are reminded of His love, His faithfulness, His continued presence and work on our behalf, it is good to give thanks to our Lord. We want to take a few moments now and invite you to just pause for a moment. Literally pause the video here in just a minute. Um, but we want, to, we want to just pause for a minute and think about something that you're thankful for, for the past year, through that, that's happened over the past year. What, what's something you find yourself thankful for? I know it has been an odd, it's been a crazy, it's been for, for some of us, it's been a painful year. It's been an eventful year for many of us. It's been a year that many of us will never forget um, in the midst of everything. But I, I, I want us to just pause for a moment and to reflect on, on the past year and find something that you are thankful for. I want, I want, I want to become this type of person. I want my family. I, I want you all. I want the church to become the type of people that can be found faithful, but also thankful. I, I, want, I want us to be found thankful no matter what comes our way, no matter what life throws at us. Every step of the way, as Colossians says, right? Every step of the way, thanking God. And I want us to become that. Um, and so, what is it that you are thankful for over the past year? We want to encourage you to write it down, uh, whether it's a passage of scripture that comes to mind, whether it's a situation, an event, a, a person, draw a picture, write it down, draw a picture, whatever that is. And, and, and if you're gathered there with people, share that with them. Take a few moments and share what you are thankful for and who you're thankful for and all of that. Um, gather together and, and, and go over that. Um, so pause the video write down something you're thankful for, and then we invite you to come back uh, for a time of communion. As we move into this time of communion, let's turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. In this time of thanksgiving, is there really anything greater that we as believers can be thankful for than the fact that God, our Father, sent Jesus, his Son, to die on our behalves and fill us with his Spirit so that he can guide us and be with us through all times. So now as we spend some time taking the bread or juice, remember that and be thankful. Let's pray. God, thank you for what you've done for us through your son, Jesus. We do not know how to say thank you enough for that. So please accept what we offer as thanks before you today. Amen.